First off, I want to thank the uh, brave men and women who work behind the wall. I want to thank them on a national level because their job goes on How recognized. How do they try to turn a guard? Well, President, uh, correctional officer. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, but correctional officer. Uh... How are you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk. Guys, today's a great video coming your way. We're going to give you five tips. Five tips on what you need to know when you enter your first day working in corrections. Prison, jail, detention center, whatnot. Now, these five tips are going to come from other experts in the field outside of myself. I'm actually going to provide only one. And these are individuals who are slowly having their impact in this profession. We're having Keith Helwig, who's an author. He's also has his own YouTube channel called Cops Corrections, has a lot of years on the job, just recently retired from corrections as a captain. And he's also one of the admins for a very big group on Facebook called the Correctional Officer Brotherhood. We also have Russ Hamilton. We all know Russ Hamilton. We all know Russ Hamilton. He's been on my show multiple times. He also has a nice sized group on Facebook called Keepers of Chaos, where we get to share information. We also have William Young, an author. He's making his impact. He wrote a great book called When Home Becomes a Housing Unit. If you guys get a chance, check it out. Great book. And we have Connie Eileen, one of the leading experts when it comes to civilian training. She actually owns a school called the Civilians Correction Academy. Definitely something worth looking up. So when we get back from our sponsors, I'm going to provide my tip, and they're going to go ahead and provide theirs. And guys, there's a lot of years of experience here sharing these tips, sharing this their stories and it's great for us to be able to have a venue like this that we're able to connect with and also share because don't forget as we put these videos up we get the comments below so that only balances what we offer so when we come back from our sponsors we're going to hear these tips now guys if you haven't the show tear talks for you you brave men and women that work in correction so please subscribe interact engage comment hit that bell that bell is going to notify you every time i post a video we'll go to our sponsors then when we come back we'll get those five tips i wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program i wanted to look at problems different i wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities amu offered those avenues to to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University, learn from the leader. This is Keith Helwig from Cops Corrections Videos. I've been asked by Anthony Ganji to make a short presentation on what's the first thing I would tell an officer on his first day. One of the first things I'm going to tell any officer listen to this is to listen to the advice of the other people that are on this video. There's, I don't know how many years of experience. Uh, everybody that's making this video has been around the business for a while and knows what they're talking about. Now, as a retired captain, one of the first things I would tell a new officer on your first day is inmates are not your friend. You're going to run into inmates that are friendly. You're going to run into inmates that you think, man, if I was on the streets, I could be friends with this guy. You're not on the streets. You're in a prison. You have a job to do. Your job is not to make friends with inmates. Now, inmates are in there for a variety of reasons. Some of them are pretty nice guys. I mean, if you met them on the streets, you probably would be friends with them if you didn't know what they did, if you didn't know why they were the way they are, if you didn't weren't aware of their proclivity to commit crimes, commit violence, whatever. Some of them are pretty nice guys. I'll admit that. But when you're in a prison atmosphere and you're working as a correctional officer, it's not your job to be there to be their friend. Now that doesn't mean you can't be friendly to them, that you can't treat them with the same modicum of respect that you would want to be treated with. That's just human nature, that you're going to treat people decently. It's your job to treat people decently. But inmates are not your friend. They don't need to know about your family. They don't need to know about your wife, your kids, your house, your car, anything else about them, or about you, I should say. If they share information about their lives with you, that's fine. It doesn't have to be quid pro quo. Inmates are not your friend. Inmates are inmates, simple as that. That sounds like a harsh reality. It sounds like a brutal thing to say. But it's a truthful thing to say. They're inmates, your officers, they are not your friend. Another bit of advice, I always close my videos with this. Stay safe and watch your back. Welcome to the, uh, to the team, to the family. Uh, look, before you go in there, I want you to know that you're going to meet some people that are going to be less than enthused to, to entertain you. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, right? We're this, this rough bunch, this this motley crew, this, 
this tight circle. So if at first you feel like an outsider, it's because, well, you are. Uh, don't get that confused with being on your own because you're not. See, we will help you. We have your back. We, we will not let you drown out there. But what I'm saying, what I, what I need you to know is that, that if it feels like veteran staff doesn't trust you, it's because, well, <laughs> we don't trust you. Uh, look, we're one giant dysfunctional family, uh, this brotherhood, right? And until you prove yourself to us, we won't trust you. Now, this has very little to do with you and a lot to do with us. See, us salty old veterans have been through a lot together. We we have broken up fights and we have responded to medical emergencies and, and we have been outnumbered and understaffed for years. Uh, we have missed important family events. We we eat like crap and we, we never have time to exercise anymore. Uh, your your positivity and your happiness and the fact that your uniform actually fits the, the way that it should bothers us. And we don't want to get to know you right away because we have watched numerous officers come and go for, for various reasons. And, and, and all we know is that we have to work a double shift again. No, don't misunderstand what I'm telling you. We we want you here. We we need you here. We love that you are part of our team. See, you just remind us of us before we started carrying the weight of our profession, before the long hours and and the assaults and the accusations. But 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 don't be deterred. Please don't let us beat you down. Show up to work with a positive attitude and a and a clean uniform. And hell, maybe it'll catch on. Maybe we'll feed off your energy and and, and your optimism and your outlook on life. And and over time, we will get to know you and we will start to trust you and we will love you and you will become part of this brotherhood. In the meantime, if you need something, give me a call. I'll be there. All right, guys. So when you enter this profession on your first day, you have to prepare to be tested. Inmates are going to request for things and they know the answer, but they're going to test you to see whether you're willing to give it to them or not. They're going to test to see where your resources are. So if you're stuck in a situation that's ambiguous, they're going to test to see where you go when you need help. Are you going to go to your peers? Are you going to go to your supervisor or are you going to go to them? So my advice to you is if you don't know, Say no right off the bat. You haven't had the experience yet to develop that discretion. So you're going to say no. Costly say no. Be that broken record. And then the key here is that if you're a supervisor, you should expect that from the new boots. You should be expecting that the new boots are going to be saying no a lot. And there may be possibly a lot of charges that those new boots are writing to kind of pave their way. Eventually, they'll develop discretion. But if you're a supervisor, you should expect that in those first couple of days, those inmates are going to be testing those officers. So those rookie officers are going to have to be at that top level. And that also goes for civilians as well, not just officers. Civilians are going to get tested as well. And again, you got to show zero tolerance. Don't be afraid to write the charges at the very beginning because you could always tone it down later on. But you have to set that high standard. If you don't set that high standard, they'll walk on you from the very beginning. Hi, I'm Connie Eileen. I'm the founder and CEO of the Civilian Corrections Academy. Today, Anthony asked for a quick video on a tip. And so one of the tips that I would give to civilians would be that you got to know when to step back, right? Know when to hold them, know when to fold them. We are in this space where we are these advocates, right? As a civilian, you're there to provide a service to the population. And then, you know, there are these informal advocacy relationships you might build with some of the um, offenders. And the reality is that there's a point when civilians have limited access to an inmate's profile, right? We don't necessarily know all their charges, their history, their incarceration, incarceration history, their behaviors prior to and while they've been in in custody so there are times where incidents happen that we might witness or we might we might hear about and we want to get involved and we want to you know advocate for the inmate so I'm not telling you that just mind your business it's none of your business I, that's not the message at all what I'm saying is there are times where you can serve as the advocate and there are times where you need to step back because your engagement or your involvement in a situation may look like you are obstructing the process. There are justifiable reasons for why certain things may or may not be happening that you just may not be privy to. So to avoid creating this us, them, and this appearance that you, you aren't a part of the team, 
sometimes you just got to be able to say, you know what, something's going on. Maybe you'll hear about it later. Maybe you won't. But maybe in the moment of a custody inmate engagement, it's not the right time for you to get involved. If you have information that might be helpful in support or against whatever the situation that's happening in the moment, you bring that forward at a later time. But in the, in the moment of that interaction with custody and the offender, as a civilian, you need to step back. So yes, we are there as advocates. Yes, we are there to provide a service, but we also are part of the team, of the DOC team. And you have to be, be aware that your actions in the moment could be creating more of a distraction from the process at hand or more of um, an obstruction to the process that's happening in the moment than you are being a help. So if you want to make sure you're on the right side of the fence, be sure to know the right time for you to actually provide your insights. Hey there, Tear Top fans, Russ Hamilton here. So Anthony Ganji asked me to do a quick little video of things that are important to know on your very first day in corrections. So anyway, uh, the point or the topic that I chose to do is going to be post orders. I don't think that there can be anything more critical than knowing and understanding your post orders. And here's the thing with post orders. Um, post orders are going to tell you what time things happen and where they happen at as well as what your responsibility is during an alarm. Um, during a critical incident, you don't want to go responding to something when you're supposed to be covering your area or another area, and you're supposed to stay there to make sure that particular area is secure. Uh, nor do you want to stay in your area or some other area when you're supposed to be responding to maybe a completely different part of the institution. These are the things that your post orders are going to tell you. They're going to outline when and where you're supposed to be and what the activities are on any particular day um, inside the institution. So you've got to pay attention to those. But you know what? It's not just enough to read through them and assume that you're going to remember all of that. You need to be going in there on your first day with your pen and paper in hands, looking at those post orders, writing down the times that things are happening, um, what kind of response are you, um, you know, where you're supposed to go during an alarm and just, you know, make a list, check it twice, make sure that you're doing the things that you're supposed to do when you're supposed to be doing them. If you have any questions, you need to direct those to your supervisor or another officer there that needs, that knows what's going on. So anyway, that's my two cents worth. And just make sure that you know those things. Because if accounts coming up, you're going to have to know that. If a recall of the yard is going to be coming up, you need to know that. What time is the meal? All of those things. So post orders, critical. Critical to know them, critical to understand them. Anyway, this is Russ Hamilton signing out. So thank you guys for listening to those five tips. Now remember guys, I'm very curious to see if you want to add a tip at the bottom to kind of build up on the comments. Kind of, again, just add into our community. But just to go over those five tips one more time because they're very important. Tip number one, inmates are not your friends. Great advice by Keith Elwig. Tip number two, this came from William Young. You may feel like an outsider at first, but that's because you have to earn your way into this brotherhood or sisterhood. So, again, great tip from William Young. Tip number three came from me. Say no at the beginning. Set that level high. You can always work down. But again, you're being tested at every moment. So say no. And if you have to write charges at the very beginning, eventually you'll get that discretion and eventually you'll, through experience, navigate your way through. Tip number four came from Connie Eileen. Great advice, Connie. As a civilian staff member, know when it's the right time to advocate. Know when it's the right time to stand up. But whatever you do, never obstruct custody from doing their job. And number five came from Russ. No policy and procedure. Great advice, Russ. And as always, guys, stay safe. The show Tear Talks for you, you brave men and women that work in correction. So please, subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. Bell's going to notify you every time I post my video. Stay safe. Whoa.